oh well, that was a fail. We needed to have one more document to be able to complete that transaction and get the, the new uh, business bank account set up. So I'm gonna head back out and do some more filming. Come along with me, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna head back down to uh, 3rd Street, start heading eastbound, head to the east side, and then make my way up north to Miller. And as you can see, no infrastructure here. You got your Shero there. But again, it's almost always just like this, not very crowded. And here's 4th Street. You can see a nice rainbow crosswalk here. And you can see that it's a pretty quiet area. And back down to 3rd Street. And once again, we're uh, back on 3rd Street, heading towards Congress Avenue. What you'll notice here at Congress Avenue, um, we have sort of a lighter, quicker, cheaper approach to a protected intersection, which just took place in the last year. And I'll swing around and give you a, a view of what that looks like up towards the Capitol. There's the Capitol, and there's the uh, Congress Avenue protected bikeway. Yeah. And you can see a couple different things in the distance here. The first is a construction zone, so we will actually uh, have to merge over into a uh, painted bike lane that they have done temporarily. This is a new building going up here. The other thing you can see in the distance is the convention center. And again, bike signal. I'll scoot past here. Don't want to get hit by this big old thing. Looks like he's got a good control of it. Get past this and we're back into our protected infrastructure. You can also see a little bit of the compromise being had here with the uh, valet area. Again, not much of a problem. It's usually quite quiet. And again, we are uh, heading towards the convention center here. We're gonna take a left, head up one block, get on to 4th Street. And that portion of 4th Street is actually closed to traffic, and that is our downtown rail station that you'll get to see. So we'll swing around. You may or may not have seen that the driver acknowledged me there and waved after he saw me. Just trying to navigate his way. It looks like he's hitting the alleyway here. And again, here's 4th Street. We're going to turn into what used to be an active 4th Street. Now you can see the bollards, removable up and down vault bollards. And on to our new cycle track here. And again, this is part of the newer infrastructure part of the transit-oriented development uh, that is happening in association with the uh, convention center here. And we've got a hotel, convention center hotel, the Hilton, and our downtown rail station here. They just expanded this to add additional lines so that they can run a couple of different uh, trains to this location. And up 
ahead you'll be able to see Interstate 35, all the cars on the overpass there. We will actually pass under that. Give you a little view of some of the infrastructure here. Yeah, I'm going to slip on through. There's no traffic. And once we make it to the other side of I-35, we will be heading into the east side of town. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, a transit-oriented development happening there. All of this is new within the last five years. Looks like we will have to wait for our turn. It'd be nice if this is prioritized for us, but it's not. And now we're on the, the east side. Again, apartments above, and that is a target underneath. For those of you in Europe, Target is like a uh, an upscale Walmart, if you know what a Walmart is. <laughs> and you can actually see one of the delivery trucks coming in. And again, lots of housing. Chase Bank over there too. Could have gone to that one if I wanted to. On this side of the street, we have an old metal recycling facility. I would not be surprised if that gets relocated before too long. This is a nice little paseo, a car-free area that used to be a street, and now it's just for people. You can see in the distance a lot of the new development happening in this area. Again, all part of the transit-oriented development pattern that is planned for this area. Uh, we're going to actually be to the next, to the first train station out of the downtown area, and we'll be able to see that in just a moment. But I'll swing this back around, some fitness equipment bike racks and a new section slipping through what used to be an alleyway and this is a good place to point out that uh, that color scheme of the red for cycle track continues whereas the pedestrian facility is just the plain concrete. Now we have a little woo nerf type area here where it's shared space for everybody. And then that is the Plaza Saltillo transit stop. So if you were heading eastbound on the train, heading out of the downtown area, that would be the first stop. And again, scooter parking. Plaza Saltillo station, bike station for the Metro bikes. It's the B cycle system, Metro bikes, and they are working on getting them all transferred out into the electric assist bikes and more parking as well as shelter parking for personal bikes. And again, here's the plaza part of Plaza Saltillo. Pretty cool little public space. Yeah, public gatherings and little events. Mm. 
It's all quite cool. And more construction. And we have one more alleyway. This particular alley has not yet been treated with the, uh, the color scheme. It was actually recently repaved within the last five years. So they didn't get on it. <laughs> they didn't get this taken care of. But we, uh, we pick back up with it here in just a moment, as you will see. And we're back on to the cycle track. This was actually developed by the apartment complexes and installed. Again, unfortunately, not that consistent coloring, but again, this was done five, six years ago before the city was really being quite intentional about having the uh, cycling facilities be that classic Dutch red, or I guess as we would say here in Austin, Texas, that looks an awful lot like a Longhorn Burnt Orange. <laughs> and again, you can kind of see, you know, the railway line is right there. So this is definitely a trail with rail and adjacent to the tracks. And this is the end of the line for this part of the, uh, the segment. We're gonna go into sort of a shared minor street. It's not quite an alley. It's actually technically Fifth Street. And, uh, but again, very, very low traffic street. Very much a shared space environment. All the potholes make it uh, quite traffic calmed. <laughs> and we're not really on this for very long. And then we get onto an older two-way cycle track and we start climbing north on the east side. And then we'll hook up to the Boggy Creek pathway. Yeah, here's one of the offices for WGI. It's a national firm that does a lot of work in the transportation and active transportation sector. I don't really follow them too closely, but Good friend Lisa works there. Hey Lisa, hope you're watching this. All right, one more block after this. And again, a little shared space. And the situation here for one more big block. And then we're going to be on the Pedernales cycle track. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in real quick to say thank you so very much for watching this video. It really means so much to me. My mission with this content and this channel is to profile some of the amazing transformations that are happening around the globe and hopefully inspire more community members and city leaders to take up the charge to help create environments that promote and support a culture of activity. So when you get to the end of this video, please consider sharing it with others. In just a couple minutes, you're about to see an extraordinary brand new all ages and abilities facility serving a critical rail station and transit oriented development. Okay, let's get back to the ride. All right, now we are on the Pedernella cycle track. And again, this is an older facility. Eventually it will get uh, spruced up, have additional protection put in. 
but you can see a couple of the different phases. So this is an area where there's no concrete included. Up ahead is an area where they went ahead and put some concrete barrier in there to create a true protection. And this is a pretty busy area. We saw the food truck area there. And here's a future cycle track user. Hi. And yes, occasionally you see some challenges <laughs> like this. That person decided to block the sidewalk and 20%, 25% of the cycle track. Obviously, this is easy to negotiate, but May not always be. Okay, here we are. We're heading into the Boggy Creek facility now. And what we're gonna see here is a combination of some newer stuff and some older stuff, but it's all quite well done. And uh, yeah, enjoy. And we're coming off of the uh, initial concrete pathway. We've got some natural surface trail here for a little while, going through a park. Some fun structures for the kids. And up ahead here, you can see both bathroom facilities as well as water. An absolute must for the trail and for the park. Don't know if you can see it or not, but just in the distance there, through the trees, are the train tracks. The rail line that we had been sharing space with for a good portion of this ride. Seeing these runners out here in short sleeves and shorts, I'm feeling a bit overdressed. And up ahead here, you'll see the return of the red concrete. And again, here we are. Newer infrastructure for the bikes. Again, 
the consistent red color. And off to the left, you can see the pedestrian facilities. Those are older facilities. That was the old original concrete path through the park. And again, you can see the, the train tracks right there to the left. And you can see plenty of the backs of some houses in this neighborhood and their access points. That is a cul-de-sac being pierced onto a trail. Exactly the way you want to see it. If you're going to have a cul-de-sac, have that cul-de-sac be pierced with a trail connection for bikes and peds. And uh, there you go. Obviously, we would prefer not to see cul-de-sacs at all, but if you're going to have them, let's make sure that they have active transportation connectors. And here is another one. You can see that. And this is a relatively new facility, but old enough that it doesn't have the, uh, the red color scheme. But we do have a little bit of that kind of filtered into the crossing here. Again. And it's worth noting that, uh, you know, these, these facilities for the city of Austin, you know, cross multiple jurisdictions. You've got the Parks Department, you've got the Public Works Department, which is in charge of building paved pathways. Uh, Parks is typically in charge of the unpaved pathways. And then when you have a facility like this, which also is part of the streetscape, and you need to have crossings within the roadbed, this is done through the transportation department and the active transportation street design division. So it is a complicated, multifaceted, interdepartmental effort. And again, this is a great example of the pathway connecting to meaningful destinations, this entire ballpark here. During the height of the season, you'll see many of the kids and parents riding their bikes to be able to hit these little league and softball facilities. And again, you'll see another connector into the neighborhood here and one of the newer bridges. I believe this was installed about five years ago. And up off to the left here, you'll see a community garden. And you'll see more housing. And as you'll note in just a moment, as we make the bend, another transit stop. So this is a transit-oriented community garden, and those are transit-oriented communities. My cousin Cody. Hey, Cody. He lives on the other side of all that. And you can see we've got our train crossing up here, so we're gonna climb up, cross over the train tracks, be able to see the transit station, transit stop. This is the MLK Junior Metro Rail stop. You can also see you've got some of your transfer buses. That's the 465 rail connector bus. All good stuff. You can get a view there. We've got a nice bike parking facility down there. Let's swing around and take a closer look at that. 
it's well worth that. Another look at some of the high quality housing. Again, all of this is new within the last five years. Again, nice indoor lot facility here for personal bikes. And Metro, the uh, Transit Authority, also controls the uh, bike share system here in Austin now. And so that is huge. I mean, there's that integration of the transit and the, the bike share. I believe there is a station right here within a block or so, so that somebody can check out a bike uh, quite easily once getting off of the train and make it to their final destination, maybe even using the path that we were just on. Okay, let's swing back around. Check this out. You're gonna notice more construction, more housing being built. And we've got our signal to go. It's nice having the bike signals. And again, more construction. And a little bit of an annoying situation here with the chronic blocking of the facilities, but it is what it is. It's unfortunate. And as I said, it's chronic. As you can see, you've got your food truck, you've got your delivery van. It is a major construction site. Oh, there's some windows, but if they're gonna block it, sure would be nice. There was some uh, effort to take in the safety of uh, those of us riding on the infrastructure, but nothing new. Okay, we're at a intersection of protected bikeways along with our cycle track here. And cycle past this again. This was done by the apartment complex in coordination with the city. Unfortunately, didn't get to them soon enough when they poured the concrete to make sure that it was the, the red color. And again, this was all parking lot before. So this is space that has been carved out from car parking and give a nice cycle path. Again, look at the, uh, the train tracks there. That's our transit line, the red line. This is intentional as a uh, shared street situation. Although I certainly could have stayed up there. It's a nice wide concrete shared use path. But I know that it gets narrow up here at the bend. So I jumped out early. But certainly when I come by here and there's kids, the kids are staying up on this elevated, protected, separated infrastructure. Again, this is a very, very quiet neighborhood. In fact, I can only say I've seen a handful of cars in all the years that I've been riding on this street. Pretty much anybody who's here lives here. So, hopefully they have kids and pets and drive slowly. 
So up ahead here, we are going to be turning right into the Cherrywood neighborhood on Cherrywood Road. And this has been a street that is currently being piloted with some traffic calming elements to it. You just saw speed hump there. And you'll see some up ahead. Again, one of those neighborhood bikeway types of strategies of taking existing infrastructure, quieter, lower volume streets, making them a little bit more pleasant. And here's a good example of why the traffic calming has been done. We see families out here all the time. Hey, hey! We do see that there is a sidewalk on one side of the street. Trying to make do with what you have. Take a look. No sidewalks in the surrounding neighborhood streets. And you notice in that section right there was a 20 mile per hour sign, you know, sort of hearkening the 20s uh, plenty campaign in the UK. Again, it'd be nicer if it was closer to 15 miles per hour. If you look at some of the design elements that they've created here, you'll see they've really been aggressive in terms of trying to slow the cars down. So, I think it's working and clearly people are responding and uh, getting out and walking their dog in the middle of the street, you know, as intended. Why not? The sidewalk is here, obviously, on the one side. And just so you know, the date is January 13th. <laughs> Holding on to the Christmas decorations. Just a little while longer. <laughs> And we're coming up on to a couple of key elements here. This is an interesting intersection, sort of a triangle. You see all sorts of indications that this is a shared street environment. Again, if this were a, a Dutch style shared street environment, a Fietstraat or a Wooner design. You'd see much more aggressive elements for traffic calming. See that we've got a 25 mile per hour sign here. Again, I prefer closer to 15. There's a speed hump. Another interesting, complicated little intersection there. It does create sort of a traffic calming element. And you'll see here that we're actually at a park. We're at a park on the far side of the Miller neighborhood. We're gonna be heading into the Miller neighborhood once we get past Airport Road. Which again is one of those major high-speed, multi-lane, high-traffic corridors that bisects through this space. Parkland, a park, as well as lots and lots of neighborhoods and housing. And this is an interesting little uh, bit of infrastructure. We're gonna head on over here to the right and we're gonna get queued up onto our own bike signal. let the magic happen. And again, it's a pretty major corridor here. Scoot up a little closer. see our 
Did get a bike signal there, bike crossing. Get across. Yeah, we're gonna jump up here onto this natural surface path. We're now in the Mueller neighborhood. Thank you all so much for watching this activity asset profile video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please, please, please give it a like, leave a comment and share it with a friend. Oh, and of course, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Up next is an all ages and abilities, active mobility infrastructure and housing tour of the Miller development led by the amazing Preston Tyree. Hey, that's all for now. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.